In today's video, I would like to talk about passenger safety in the back seat of the Nissan Murano. Back here, you have a bench seat and it splits in a 60-40 ratio, larger going to the right side and the left outboard seat getting the 40%. So you do have another outboard seat over there and a rather narrow middle seat. In today's video, I would like to focus on seat belts. For this outboard passengers, you have a pretty conventional seat belt arrangement over here. And just grab the tongue, put it over whatever you're trying to secure, and insert the tongue into the buckle. And once it clicks, you're nice and secure. You have your three-point harness down there, down here, and up here. So this is your lap belt, and this one here is your body belt or your torso belt. That's nice and pretty easy to understand, right? However, it seems like the center seat gets tricky sometimes. And I'm saying this based on the videos and pictures I've seen. I, I've noticed that people don't really secure the, uh, the center seat belt properly. And that could pose a safety risk for the people you're trying to secure down there, back there, or any objects you're trying to keep down there, okay? So let's go ahead and I'll show you the proper way to do it. It always starts with the tongue, right? So you notice that I could get this tongue from the side of the body, right? But for the center, for the middle seat, it's actually located up here. And depending on what you know or what the previous owners of your vehicle know or did not know, sometimes you find the tongue dangling like this. And that's okay. I mean, there's nothing really bad about doing it this way, but sometimes it just gets annoying all the, you know, depending on your drive and your road conditions. So let me show you how to properly secure it in case, and this will also show you how to gain access to it in case you started with the buckle in this towed position. So you have a larger buckle here, this is conventional, and you have a little, sorry, you have a larger tongue here, and you have a little tongue over here, okay? So when you store it, just let the thing retract, and sometimes it needs some help, and once the big tongue goes up, you have the little tongue. When you look back here, there's a slot, okay? And that's where the little tongue goes into. So push this up, and then just pull it, pull it backwards. Shouldn't miss it. And in fact, I feel like I'm struggling more because I'm looking through the phone screen. But if I were just doing it blindly, it seems to go much easier. Okay, to remove it, just go ahead and push this backwards or just grab the strap and pull it backwards. And this is where we started the video, right? Okay, nice and dandy. So let's go ahead and pull this down. And as I said, you do have two um, two buckles, or rather two tongues. It seems like I always use buckle and tongue interchangeably sometimes. So if I make a mistake and you're in the seatbelt business, please forgive me, okay? So here, it's pretty simple. When you get this this way, bring it out and go ahead and insert it right here. You turn it so that the hook is facing forward. There you go, it clicks, right? Nice and easy. And then go ahead and we're going to make this one click into its its buckle. So its buckle is right here, it's hidden. And back in the day they used to make it very evident. The the center buckle usually had center written on it because you know you don't want to make a mistake. And sometimes, yes, it can go into the wrong one, but then the crisscross, and again, that affects your safety because now you're loading the seat belts differently than designed. And here you go. This is it. You have your three-point harness over here as well, just like you would over here with this one here. And we're going to step back so you can see how it looks arranged. And there you go. None the wiser. It looks exactly the same. And you have pretty much the same features because you have um, ELR, that is em emergency locking retractors, right? Whenever you hit the brake so hard, this just locks up, right? But you can extend it all the way nice and easy. Same thing here. If you were to hit the brakes aggressively, it locks, right? But if you were to go slowly, it just does that. And you also have ALR, automatic locking retractors. That's the one I usually um, say that that's the one you use to lock down your seat belt. Uh, you, you, car seat your child car seat as an example so whenever you extend this all the way out sometimes you hear it clicking there you go and at this point you notice that it's locked and it won't let go even if i try to open it gently right so you have to go all the way now it's unlocked 
okay so same thing here you do have the ALR as well go ahead and extend it all the way out well I guess I'm getting it at weird angles there you go when you hear it clicking you know it's locked and there's nothing I can do to unlock it at this point yet right and once it goes back to a certain point There you go, it unlocks. So that's it. So having shown you the correct way to do it, let me show you some of the pitfalls of this whole project, okay? Or at least things to avoid. And I'll show you the engineering um, design features that have come to counteract those possibilities. So whenever you need to unlock this, I would start with that side personally. And then over here, you need an object to release this catch right here. I usually use the buckle, but I suppose you could use a key or a screwdriver. It just seems very easy to use the, the tongue. See, I called it a buckle again. Just do this. And once you have it there, if I can find it, there you go. It jumps out, right? And then go ahead and retract it. And as I said, you could leave it dangling if it doesn't bother you or just go ahead and push it up and lock it in okay so talk about um dedicated buckles for the center and the side as i said in the past i've, I've had cars where it is labeled very clearly it says center or middle and then side side or right left depending on how how much money they wanted to invest in engraving these things so let's start with this one here let's start with the middle one the middle tongue Although this one here is not labeled, if you tried to insert the middle tongue on the side, it will not click at all. It does not lock. And even if you turned it and tried to do this, it does not lock at all. So that is one way they have counteracted the possibility of you crisscrossing belts, right? Because there would be a safety, as I said. Once you twist your belts and you're loading them in a different direction than designed, that's a safety concern over there. This one here, we're going to use this one here as an example. By the way, it wouldn't work in here either, just so you know. And I suppose I'll try it just so you know. So it doesn't work in either of the outboard, right? Just so that you don't use it the wrong way. Go ahead and put it up. This one here, the outboard tongues do not work in the center, center buckle either. It does not lock. It cannot lock, and even if you turn it around, it still does not lock. Okay? All right, so that's cool. That's part one. We're already taking care of that possibility. And here's the other thing. Sometimes, if you did not know that this is supposed to go one direction, you might try to install it maybe facing backwards with a hook facing backwards. Do you see what, you know what I'm talking about? Bring this up. Let me get rid of the flashlight. It seems to be messing up the image. Okay, whenever you bring this here, and as I said, I just turned it without really explaining what I was doing, but the hook needs to face forward like this, and that's how it locks. If you try to make the hook face backwards, what do you know? Nothing happens. It never, it never locks. So again, an engineering design that counteracts the possibility of you installing it, in, you know, insecurely. This thing keeps falling inside there. So bring it up. So here's the other thing. I guess you could potentially twist this thing. And, you know, again, some people don't seem to be bothered by that. But personally, it really gets to me whenever people twist the seat belts. I like it flat, you know, so that it's nice and secure on you. And plus, you don't want this thing irritating your kids' necks, right? So the other thing is that over here... You could, depending on how you set up, if there was ever a possibility of you getting it twisted and then going the other way, one way I usually say you could do is just get the tongue from the top, if you have the ability to do this, right? Go ahead and insert this in the, in the buckle first, the big tongue first, 
and and maybe this is where I usually a lot of I see a lot of people whenever they in, um, improperly do it you know it's a two-point harness better than nothing for sure but you know this one right here the seat is already so narrow like why are you putting something else to uh, you know irritate your kid you know to be uncomfortable sitting next to so what we usually do or what you could do is once you've if you have the space right once you've done this you could go ahead and pull this up this way right and now it's nice and flat and then go ahead and just lock it in I suppose the one hint I'd say is that the black needs to be facing outwards whenever you have this fully secured. But again, it's not the biggest deal in the world if you were to twist it. It's just that I feel like it gets uncomfortable at that point. I feel like I might end up taking this elastic strap out. As I said, whenever you do this, go ahead and release it. Oh, nice. It jumped. I hope the video caught that. I did not. So that's it. It's a pretty long video, but I hope um, the safety implications, if whatever you're trying to, to do, if whatever's back here is important enough to try to even use a seatbelt on, then it's got to be important enough, important enough to use a seatbelt properly on it, right? I hope this video helps and all the best out there. Stay safe.